And there we go. Hey, this is Tuesday, January 5th of 2021, as we begin our new year with the death of 2020. Um, hopefully 2020 burns in the garbage fire that was the metaphor for the year as we go into 2020 year uh, and get things everything better. Wait, what happened? Wait, that, that happened? What, the end of 2020? Uh, yes, we're five days in, Jaden. Surprise! It's a whole new year. That's what happens on New Year's Eve. It's literally right there in the name. Oh, I can't wait till I get to teach my advanced class. Anyway, uh, so as we get into it after this class, you do have <laughs> not already ruined just because you had to come to my class. Uh, the sixth period. Um, if you don't know what your class is, by the way, for some of you guys, if you ended up changing classes, um, and let's say you don't know where you're supposed to go for something, let me know. I'm more than happy at the end uh, to look up what class you're supposed to go to. Because I had some kids who are in uh, like business class or now in art class or had art and going somewhere else. And so if you're not sure where you're supposed to go, let me know and I will help you out. Uh, wow, 2020 did sell poorly, uh, but it was trending on Twitter a lot. Uh, so Divergent, you mean just the first book or do you mean like all three books? I mean, I guess probably the first book. Reading all three books in three days would be kind of crazy, but still the first book's pretty good. Anyway, it is a series, um, and they, I would like to say, get better, but they go on back and forth. I was not real fond of Divergent. The, I'm not, personally, I'm not fond of whiny main teenage characters, uh, and Divergent had a very whiny main teenage character. And she was like, oh, woe is me. Why won't the boys like me? Oh my goodness, I'm going to jump out of a building. Oh my goodness, what should I do? And so I, don't know. I like my protagonist to be a bit more confident. Yeah, and no, no bullying other people. Um, well, I agree, but for some people it would be. And Sasha's here. Uh, let me make sure that I can find Sasha. Sasha, are you alive? There's young, young living Sasha. Sasha, I have to see you to make sure that you're alive and make sure you're not a fake person coming in trying to pretend. All right, Sasha, now you can go back to hiding now that I've verified that you're a living human. So there, all right, no, where am I? Ah, I lost my chat. No, all right, whoopie doopie, hang on, stop sharing, come back, and then, what? Oh, yeah, I'm assuming that's a YouTuber? I don't know that person. That's not one of my daughters have caught me up on yet. Oh, it's up here, let's bring it back. There we go, ugh, no! Why am I struggling? All right. Um, there we go. Shoot. Uh, we are moving on to fables. We are done with outsiders, aside from randomly making comments about Sophia stabbing people and stuff like that. Uh, we are moving on from all of that old stuff and going into a new area. Uh, one is fables, and then two is going to be Greek mythology, which is the next thing that we're going to be moving into for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, and so we'll be getting into a lot of stories along those lines. I have no idea if you passed out from happiness or from anger, uh, but like every, everything I do, um, it's going to be my version of it. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that pretty much covers everybody. Um, now, I've had to make some changes because normally when I start into January into February, this is where we get to begin our speech unit. Uh, and you guys get to be standing up and doing talking and fun stuff like that. But we can't do speeches over Zoom because that's just not going to work. Uh, now, I don't know when we're going to get a chance to see each other in person again. I don't know if that's going to be coming up in two weeks or in two months. So, uh, Owen, you give me a second, Owen. I'll come back to that comment. Um, but as far as the speeches go, I'm going to be pushing them back till later. My guess is that you guys are not coming back after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, because our numbers are not suddenly better. We still have a bunch of people who have issues and stuff like that. My guess is that they'll bring back elementary kids, uh, but that junior high kids, we're still going to be doing this Zoom thing for a while, which means I still want to get to speeches. It's just that speeches won't happen until I actually have you in my classroom. And much like with everything I do, speeches for my class are not horrible. Uh, I try to do somewhat fun speeches where you guys get to babble about things and tell stories and stuff like that. They're not all about research and standing up in front of the class and crying. Uh, some of them are standing up in front of the class and crying, but not all of them. Speaking of kids crying in class, 
That's what you're going to find out happened here in just a second ago. Some of you guys process what just occurred. Uh, two, Owen, I completely understand your comments about the whole Greek mythology thing. But part of that is the problem is you had Greek mythology taught to you by a different teacher. Um, Greek mythology taught by me is not like how you've had it ever taught by any other teacher. Uh, those of you who have had Greek mythology in the past, yay, it's going to give you some idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, those of you who have never had Greek mythology, you're going to be going along the same lines. Do we get to choose our own speeches? Yeah. Um, if not, what's the point of doing a speech if you can't choose your own? If I force you to do a speech, it takes all the joy out of it. Um, and you get to give speeches about making poor choices and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll get all into those things later on. So anyway, but before we get to speeches, which will be after we see you guys in person, and at, before we get to Greek mythology and make Owen really upset and sad, which is not going to be for like another week or something like that. Ugh, yes, Perla gave an interesting speech last year. That was the first time ever I'd had a kid give a speech like that. And I'm hoping it's the only time ever I have someone give a speech like that because it was eye-opening. Uh, for the rest of you, we're going to get to fables and you are, we are going to be... <sighs> ah, squid can stop laughing. Uh, you're going to need paper and a writing utensil because we're going to be getting into a little bit of notes uh, as we get into things here in a moment. Uh, interesting. Well, Kyla, I'll be interested to see if how I do Greek mythology is the same way, because uh, mostly me teaching Greek mythology is me just telling stories and stuff like that. Um, I had a kid. So, all right, quick timeout. So with speeches. I let you tell, one of the speeches you give is you have to tell us about a poor choice you've made and how you learned from it and how it made you a better person. Uh, and I get to hear all kinds of interesting stories about kids who like try to make mac and cheese and forget to put water in the mac and cheese and then put it into the microwave and set a microwave on fire and stuff along those lines. Uh, but I had a girl who was very comfortable with herself and very outgoing, uh, whose story involved, um, publicly coming into womanhood for the first time and the shocking thing it did to her clothing. Uh, and so that was the story that she told to the entire class. Uh, and they all watched as my jaw dropped open uh, because that was not a story that I'd ever had told in class before. Uh, for those of you who have not had a class that has taught you what that's referenced to, I'm fine with that. That's as much detail as I'd like to go into because it was educational on my part and not a thing I ever hope to have happen again. Sophia, I'm scared to see what question you could possibly be asking. What if you're an angel and you just never did anything wrong before? Uh, well, one, we know we're not talking about you, girl who likes to play <laughs> with knives, and you're thinking about other kids, but that's why I give you like four choices as your different stories you get to choose from. It's just a lot of kids like to choose the poor choice I've made in the past but there's other options you can choose from. Or, you know, that one time you stabbed a kid and had to learn from, hang on, apparently my phone's ringing. Uh, let's go with, uh, cause we're gonna be doing a notes thing and having you guys write stuff down here in just a moment. Uh, and so we're gonna be getting into fables, giving you guys some notes, talking about it. Um, in case you guys were also unaware, all of our grades have reset. So all of your first semester grades are now gone. So you're back currently sitting at an A or a zero out of zero, depending on how you want to look at things in my class at the moment. Um, our first grade is, yes, I resumed recording. Thank you for asking. Uh, at least I think I did. Let's make sure I hit. Yes, I did record. All right. And so go me. Um, let's try here. And um, it's also an A. Um, if it helps, I'll go through and give you guys all a grade of one out of one, which will then give you an A plus. Uh, and so, yes, I'm, if I remember to do that, I will go back and give you guys all a one out of one grade uh, for smiling today. Uh, and we'll just assume that you guys have smiled on some level um, or just existing. And then that will give you an A plus in my class. And then it'll be up to you to leave that one. I like that one. Done. Uh, two. Uh, we have no grades coming this week. I thought we were going to have a quiz coming up on Thursday, but we're not. I'm going to push the quiz till next week. I wasn't sure how long it was going to take us to get through things. And given how long I've already been babbling, it'll just be better to, you don't have to nod your head that enthusiastically, uh, but we're going to get to the quiz next week and try to help you guys out from there.
All right, so that goes for all of your classes. They have reset. All of your missing assignments are gone. All of your good grades are gone. They're just gone, 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 gone. All right, there. Uh, your outsider's book, just to remind you, if you hold on to it, I will eventually buy it off of you for B points or candy. If you want to bring it back someday when we see each other, uh, bring it in and I'll be happy to buy it off you. If you want to keep it, that is fine with me. You're welcome to keep your book. I would just bring it out and try to help you guys out. And then that's for my regular class. But for you guys, if you really liked Outsiders, the sequel is on Canvas and you're welcome to read the sequel if you want to. For those of you who don't hate reading and can read a book in three days, uh, the sequel is actually shorter than The Outsiders. It's a shorter book, but better and more adulty. Uh, it deals with more with death and drugs and poor choices and stuff like that. All right. Now we're ready to go. So either A, uh, paper to write stuff down on, or uh, as my daughters are now doing, they're trying to use two devices and they're doing all of their note taking on one device and then doing their zooming on a different device. And so if that's the thing you wanna do also, somewhere where you can write this information down to try and help you out in some way. Um, sure. uh, it is pot because Outsiders was 180 pages and the sequel is like 100 and. 60 pages or something like that. It's a shorter book. That's a, I don't know. It's a fast read. You can blink your way through it. All right. Here's how my notes are set up. I do what is called a T chart, uh, where I'm going to have like a system set up where it's going to have uh, the, the main topics on the left, and then it's going to have the other things we're going to write down on the right. And so this be, and so if you don't set yours up the same way, I'm absolutely fine with that. Just as long as you know this information, just to give you a heads up. I will be doing an oral quiz partway through the class uh, where I'm going to be stopping and then coming back in there and seeing which kids have been paying attention and who knows what's going on and stuff like that. So if you have stuff written down, you can cheat off of yourself. Um, and if you don't have anything written down, that definitely makes it a little bit tougher on you. Um, yes, notebook, paper, go burr. All right. So as we get into our fables, here are the three types of fables you are going, by the way, you guys all know fables. They've existed for thousands of years. Uh, they were like one of the very first stories that started getting told way back in the day. Um, and I'll actually give you guys the quick short history on fables in just a moment because it's going to go into what we're getting into. Fables are for furries. Good job, Renzo. You are correct, uh, which is a thing that we'll get into here in a moment. I mean, not quite in the creepy way, but yes, I mean, technically it deals with animals and furries are... Animals also, furry life matters. All right, so we get into, here is your first one. Traditional, this is the type of fable that has been around forever and ever and ever. Um, it is going to use what is, <laughs> what just like life or class or just in general. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, I can't keep you here. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll miss you, bye. I, I guess makes me sad a little bit, but I guess we'll just roll with that one. Um, old timey stuff. Oh, you're upset because we were talking about furries. Don't be an anti furite. Furries deserve love too. Um, anyway, types of fables. Traditional. This is the kind that <laughs> oh, kind that has existed forever. Almost every fable that you guys can think of is going to be a traditional fable where it has animals. Uh, not furries. Furries are modern and contemporary. I'm dealing with the ones from thousands of years ago. And so they're the ones that dealt with like animals out in the woods. And we had to learn a lesson from it and stuff like that. Well, Eli, that's why God made Google. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. It's also why God made clearing your internet search history. Uh, so I wish you the best of luck on that one. Um, and so that would be the traditionalist, the one that's been around for long. Ooh, all right. Let's give you guys, it's tempted to give you guys two different ones. Let me give you guys, no, I'll have to save that for the modern one. So we'll save that. All right. <clears throat> That's probably a good idea. Uh, the short version is furries are people who like to dress up as animals, and it may feel more comfortable uh, in an animal costume, and that brings them happiness. Uh, so that's more what they were going for. Wow, throwing some shade on it. So anyway, let me give you guys a quick example of a fable that is the traditional style. One that I'm hoping you guys have heard before. It's called uh, The Tortoise and the Hare. And so I'll give you my version of Tortoise and the Hare. Uh, there's probably lots of different versions out there that you guys have seen, but here's the Broviac traditional Tortoise and the Hare. All right. One day there was a 
tortoise hanging out in the woods with a bunch of his little animal friends. And as they were talking between him and the gopher and the woodchuck and the squirrel, a rabbit walks up. And the rabbit's like, hey, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, nothing. We we're just chilling and having a good time. And the rabbit goes, well, all of you guys look incredibly slow and I'm incredibly fast. So why don't one of you race me to see who's the fastest one in the woods? And they go, uh, no, but thank you. I'm sure you'd probably beat us because you seem like you're a really fast animal. And he keeps trash talking them, you know, how those jerk animals do. And he's like, oh, you're just a bunch of scared little animals. So eventually they go, fine. The turtle steps up and goes, you know what? You think you're all that. How about I race you? And the rabbit looks at the turtle and goes, well, no, I meant like one of the other fast creatures. You're kind of like a joke. I'm not even going to bother racing you. And the turtle goes, hey, put up or shut up. And the rabbit's like, oh, snap. Okay, I guess it's on. So the rabbit goes, all right, you and me are going to have a race. So they look over to their friend, the owl, because owls are adorable. And the owl comes down and scratches. Um, <laughs> well, then JC talks some good trash talk and scrapes his little claw into the dirt and says, all right, this is our starting line. The first animal who makes it to the empty area in the field, you become the winner. When I say go, you're going to take off. And the turtle's like, game on. And the rabbit's like, game on. And so the owl raises his little wings and goes, hoot. Uh, that's owl for go. And both animals take off running. And the turtle's like, turtle, 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 running his little turtle tushy off. <laughs> Alliteration. And then the rabbit whoosh, takes off. Dust goes flying into the air and runs as fast as he can. Gets halfway across the forest turns around and sees the turtle still just turtling along. Turtle, 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 turtle. And the rabbit's like, you know what? That turtle tried to embarrass me in front of all those other animals. So I think the best thing to do is to try and humiliate that turtle. So the rabbit lays down right in the middle of the whole course and just curls into a little rabbit ball and just starts taking a nap. He's like, I'm going to take a nap and I can still get up and smoke that guy before he gets to the innocent line. The turtle keeps on doing his turtle thing. Turtle, 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 turtle. And eventually, because he doesn't move real fast, he's fairly silent like a ninja and goes right past the rabbit and gets close to the finish line. All the other animals get super excited and start cheering like, oh my God, turtle's gonna win, turtle power. Turtle power. Anyway, they all start screaming and getting excited and they make so much noise, it wakes up the rabbit the rabbit pops up with his little ears, and they start looking around like little radars, and they see where the turtle is, and the rabbit goes, no, and runs as fast as he can. He's like, rabbit, 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 and right as he gets to the finish line, he dives, puts out his ears, and slides through the dirt across the finish line in time to see the turtle looking down at him already across, and all the animals cheer, and they go, that's what you get. It doesn't matter how fast you are, because everyone knows slow and steady wins the race, and they all laugh at the rabbit and walk away. And the moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race, although it really should be like don't sleep in the middle of a racetrack, or don't taunt people, or just finish the race, but whatever. Apparently, it was slow and steady wins the race. So that's our fable taking place in old traditional times. I know, they're also delicious. Uh, where you have to have, uh, you should not really have humans in it. It should be taking place a long time ago in the woods. You should have animals in it and stuff like that. Now we have a second fable called verse fable, which is a different kind. Not verses like with um, short stories and we did the external conflict, you had the fighty thing, the something versus something. That's V-E-R-S-U-S. -S. Um, like in Among Us, um, you can't play Among Us unless you're sus, and in Among Us, you're versus people, so the S-U-S. -S. This is V-E-R-S-E, -E, which is a whole different thing altogether. Ooh, all right, hang on. Not a full chat challenge again, more of my just curiosity. Do you guys know what a verse is? I mean, for those of you who do music, in theory, you should know what a verse is. So no, you're not raising your hand to yell at me yet. I'm having people put it into, that's what a chat challenge is. It's not a yell at me challenge. I mean, so there, ooh, not bad, all right. You can't just write down, I know. That's not an answer. The question is you tell me what it is. You can't just put, yep, I know. 
If not, you can put that on every single test. Yep, I know this one. Yep, I know this one too. Oh, this one's easy. And just answer every question that way. It'd be genius, by the way. And you're, well, good job. A paragraph and a song. Go you when two people battle. No, that's a, that's a different, that's verses. We just got done sassing you on that one. Uh, part of a fable, not really, but a good try on that one. All right, so you guys do know. Go you. All right, so it is part of a song. All right, hang on. What do you call a song with no music? If you just have the lyrics written there, by the way, this is a thing we studied. Oh, never mind. You were fast on that one, Eli. Go you. The answer should be a poem. A song without music is just a poem. Because essentially, it's just a bunch of words that rhyme with each other. That's what a verse fable is. A verse fable is a fable that is just written out as a poem. A verse fable is a fable written as a poem. Mackie, did you still need to yell at me about something? All right, your hand was still up. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't ignoring you for the fun of it. I put your hand, Mackington, I already put your hand down. There you go, stop making me sashy. Stop putting your hand back up, Mackington. All right, goodness, don't you give me that face. <clears throat> back to here. Since I made you listen to my traditional fable, I'm also gonna do a verse fable. Um, but this one is gonna be kind of scary. Because I'm going to try and come up with one that has rhymey bits to it. So we're going to stick with that same idea of the tortoise and the hare. All right, ready? <clears throat> Give me a second to think. All right. There once in the forest was a bunny who trash talked so much it was not funny. He said, I wish one of you would challenge me to a race. But there's no way that would happen because you can't keep up with my pace. Uh, uh, not, not a turtle. Uh, tor uh. The turtle said, um, yes. Wait, no. The turtle said, yes, I'm more than happy to. I can. You and me will get into this race that we shall ran. The owl raised its wings and said to go. The Rabbit said, this race I've won, I already know. Partway down the course, he laid down to take a nap. Um, if I had better skills, I'd turn this into a wrap. Ooh, wow, look, at, look at that timing. Good job, Savannah. Uh, and the, no, I'm not stopping. I'm almost done. I can push all the way through. Uh, and then, um, then, uh, he took the nap. Uh, the turtle crossed the finish line. Um, and he said, "You, I can't stop on a dime. No, that is mine. Mine. I didn't mind. This race I'm going to win is going to be mine uh, because slow and steady wins the race. I got nothing. Slow and steady wins the race. It, uh, um, it can't. It made total sense. You understood everything that came across. It just hurt your brain. You can't attack me on that one. I am a failure. But wow, if I had emotions, that would hurt me. Um, all I'm hearing is that Nate is challenging me to a verse fable rap battle and that Nate can step up and pop off uh, with his own. See, look at me speaking my Gen Z at you on that one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, all of a sudden, my horrible poem doesn't sound so bad. You know, after I have to do one on your own. Um, yeah, that's what I have to do also. All right. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I figured the same thing. Yeah, see, I, I may be like the rabbit. But I don't know. At least I finished the race. I've got nothing. I just came across horribly. All right, third one. Enough of that painfulness. Modern fable. And so this is our last time. Oh, no more hilarious than my failed attempt. The worst part is I had to do that for first period also. And so in theory, part of it was in my brain, but it, apparently it all fell out. Uh, that'd be awful. So a modern fable. So I had to look up a, a scientific word uh, to help you guys out on this one. So a traditional one is old tiny stuff. So a modern fable, to use a scientific term to make sure you can understand what it is, it uses today -y stuff. So a modern fable uses today -y stuff. Wow, holy cow, just shots fired. So many angry children out there. Uh, I'm sure you could get two small children to be judges. Mm -hmm. Shocker on that one. Um, and so a modern fable is where now it should be set uh, with cars and cell phones, and Twitter accounts, uh, and, and the fact that it's taking place in a school, you still have animals as your main characters, uh, but you're, there's more like a, a Disney movie 
Uh, if you saw, uh, what was it? The, all, uh, Zootopia. Uh, Zootopia is sort of an example of like that, of a modern fable where it sort of was like, a Ooh, what's that? You want me to give you an example of a modern fable? Why, yes, yes, I can. All right, game on. Hey, I'm not trying to rhyme this one, so it can't be nearly as bad. And I'll try to make it a little bit faster. Ooh. All right, maybe I'll even give you two modern fables, one specifically for this class, but I'll, I'll give you the generic one first. Oh, hang on, I have to get Colleen back in. You didn't have to ask. Uh, you existing was all the asking I needed. Me not getting to yell at kids for two weeks. All right. <clears throat> well, that's fine. That's why I, I, at the end of class, I check who all left and when they left. So I, if you leave early, it's fine for me. It just counts your absence. It's not going to hurt my feelings at all. Uh, apparently, if he comes back, he comes back. Anyway, let me stick with my tortoise and the turtle and the hare, but I'll do this as a modern one. So we can at least have a, a comparison across all three. <clears throat> so now instead of in the woods. All right, so we have... So one day at Forest Junior High, there was the turtle who was on the chess team because he liked to be slow and methodical and take his time and think his thing through. And he was walking down the school hallways talking to some friends when he bumped into the rabbit hanging out with a bunch of the other track team kids. And the rabbit was like, whoa, bruh, what's up with that? And he pushes the turtle back against the wall. And the turtle's like, hey, and he pulls out his Gen Z dictionary. He's like, flip, flip, flip. He's like, bruh, oh, game on. And he goes, what's up with you? And the rabbit goes, listen, you can't just be bumping into me. I run this school. I'm an athlete. And the turtle goes, well, I'm on the chess team and I'm super smart. So I don't care what you have to say. And the rabbit goes, game on. You and I are going to race after school if you think you're so good. And the turtle goes, all right, I, I can do that. Well, let's you and me race. As they decide to meet on the track after school at three o'clock. They go, all right. So after school at three o'clock, they go out to the track. And out there is the owl who's on the academic team. Because owls are smart. See how I made that connection? And so on the academic team. And the owl goes, all right, you're going to do one lap around the track. And whoever gets back to this point first wins. And you get to take a picture of the other person and taunt them on Instagram. And they go, isn't that online bullying? They go, no, because it's only going to happen one time. So it's not bullying. It's called being a jerk. There's a difference. And they go, oh, OK, that makes complete sense. And then the owl goes, all right. One, two, three, hoot! And they both take off running as fast as they can. And the turtle's like, turtly, 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 turtly. And the rabbit gets halfway around. And all of a sudden, he notices all of these squirrel cheerleaders who are out there on the sidelines doing the squirrel cheerleading practice. And instead of uh, pom-poms, they have their tails and they're shaking their tails. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrely, squirrel, 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 squirrel. And they're cheering at, and all of a sudden the rabbit's like, Arr! and he stops, he's like, how you do it and he goes over and starts talking to all the squirrel cheerleaders and flirting with them and the turtle just keeps on walking turtly 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 and the cheerleaders like hey and he's like hey and it's all kinds of creepy because you have these animals flirting with each other and then all of a sudden the squirrel's like hey um i think you're gonna lose the race and he's like no nah. seriously right in the middle of me telling a story hang on right back again or but she was keeps calling so they say, hey, you're getting ready to lose. And he goes, no. And then all of a sudden, they go, he sees a, a, the turtle at the finish line. So he takes off running as fast as he can, slides across the finish line again in time to see the turtle sitting there who taunts him, immediately holds up his cell phone. But you, it takes a picture of him laying on the ground. And the taunting begins. And he posts it online. And he doesn't get kicked out of school for bullying because it's only a one-time thing. He goes, hey, you know, if you hadn't stopped to flirt, you would have won. But because I was slow and steady, I won the race. It was the same idea again. <sighs> Would have been better without being interrupted by pff, other teachers. Whatever. So anyway, that gives you the modern version of our fable for the whole ideas that takes place in today -y times. What you like? Nice. All right. Let's continue with our notes. Oh wait, uh, do I have another fable? Nah, we'll save that one. I think I'm going to create a fable just for this class, but not quite yet. Uh, we'll save that one. All right. So here is where I get to give you, yes, you did. Good job. A little bit of backstory on how fables work. So every fable has to have a moral in order to qualify as a fable. And it goes back to why fables were first created. And this goes back thousands of years. Uh, back during, not quite to dinosaur times, but definitely a long time ago. And so it goes back where 
there was a time when we did not have school. Prior to school existing, it was just people running around being, well, dumb. And I know your first thought Mr. Broviak, no school, that'd be the best thing ever. But this was also before video games. Uh, so if you were bored during the day, all you did was like play with rocks. And the problem with them not having school is that without school, people grew up to be what scientists called stupid. Uh, and they did all kinds of stupid things. So at one time, way back in the day, there was a fun game that kids used to play called Headsy Roxy. And here's how you would play Headsy Roxy. You would pick up the biggest rock you could, and then you and your friend would smack each other in the head with a rock until one of you died. And whoever died lost the game. And it was really popular. And so all of a sudden, one day, there's two kids who are playing Headsy Roxy's. And all of a sudden, this old guy walks by and he's like, hey, what are you two kids doing? And they're like, smack, 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 smack. They're like, we're playing a game of Headsy Roxy's. And he's like, what are you, dumb? They're like, yeah, we've not gone to school. And he's like, oh, well. And the old man goes, well, you should stop doing that. And they go, what? We're not going to stop doing this. What are you, some kind of old person? We're not going to listen to you, boomer. And then all of a sudden, the old man goes, well, well, did you ever hear the story of the squirrel and the rhinoceros? And the kid's like, no, no, we haven't. What about the squirrel and the rhinoceros? So the old man starts telling them the story about the squirrel and the rhinoceros. And the kids are fascinated by it. Then he goes, so one day, there was a small squirrel and he was friends with the rhinoceros. And they'd come up with this new game called Roxy Headsy. And the way it would work is you would take a large rock and then you would hit your friend in the head until they were knocked unconscious. And the kids were like, oh yeah, we're into this story. They go, well, the squirrel went first and he picked up his rock and he went over to his friend, the rhinoceros, and he hit the rhinoceros in the head as hard as he could and nothing happened. And the rhinoceros is like, okay, it's my turn. And the squirrel goes, okay. And so the rhinoceros picks up his rock and he hits the squirrel Flat! and kills the squirrel and the squirrel dies. And then the rhinoceros is lonely and lives the rest of his days regretting the fact that he killed his best friend. And the kid's like, oh my God, that's horrible. Why would that, and he goes, I know. And it turns out that was the very first fable that was told, which is the idea of trying to teach kids not to do dumb. All right, it's a rough estimate of the first fable that was ever told and the whole idea of fables was to teach kids not to do dumb stuff and so fables only existed as an early version of school and then what happened is as time went by some of these old people got really good at telling the stories and so eventually kids would actually come to the old people to hear their stories to learn these different lessons and that's actually no joking, how school started was just these people telling stories to these kids. And eventually they started adding in more stories that connected to other things and it sort of helped the kids become educated. And so fables were the very first versions of schooling way back in the day. So in order for a fable to work, it has to have a moral. If we're not teaching kids something, then it's not working. So a moral is gonna be your lesson learned, advice, observation on human nature, whatever it may be. Like, don't hit your friend in the head with a rock. Or you should always take notes in Mr. Broviak's class because you get to use it on the quiz. Or when you make poor choices in chat, he takes it away and then you have to sit there and cry the whole time. Whatever your particular moral may be, it's a thing that you've learned that you can write a story about to help other kids learn things. Elena, were you excited about the game of Headsy Roxy's? And you're like, I have two siblings. Yes, you could teach them how to play Hezzy well, Roxy. Well, yes, yes, sort of. Um, but the problem is, is children don't listen, though. Children don't listen. It goes in one ear and out the other. So, so how did they the fables stay around? Like, what? it didn't. Well, you, you're you're correct. Uh, that's why all the dumb kids died. Uh, the kids who listened were the ones who lived on and then got to make new sets of kids. All the dumb, dumb kids, they're walking around with large dents in their head, going out and trying to drink a tree. They're like, oh, Mr. Brovick, you, you can't drink a tree. Well, tell that to the dumb, dumb kid. That's the whole point. That's why fables existed 
to prevent you from becoming a dumb, dumb kid. <clears throat> now, there are five things that make a story a fable. So here's the five things that we have to know. If we are going to teach kids, and we're going to pretend we're back in old timey days, if we're going to teach kids to not become giant dum-dums, here's the five things we have to have. The first most important thing, well, we actually already know this. What is the first most important thing that fables have to have? You don't have to raise one, I guess you could raise Moral. one. Moral? Works for me. On that one, you can just, there you go, just yell at me. You have to have a moral. If there's no moral, it's just a creepy old man telling you a story. Is that called visiting my grandpa for Christmas? Yeah, that's called visiting your grandpa for Christmas. Um, and so it actually has to teach you a moral. But I did learn a moral, and it's called not being trapped in a room with my grandpa because he tells weird stuff. Yeah, well, that's a different kind of moral. But the idea is you're supposed to learn something. Uh, Rut Sito, are you trying to ask a question, or are you blocking out the learning? I was just, I couldn't tell. All right, I couldn't tell. You're like, make the learning stop. And you were just trying to block it out, which I could also respect a little bit. All right. The second most important thing is the type of character. Fables always have to have the same kind of characters. If we want kids to pay attention, what kind of, by the way, I've already given to you this as an answer. So those of you who are brave enough to unmute and yell at me, what kind of characters Animal. should we have? Animals. 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 Specifically. Dumb kids. Hopefully, Animals. Hopefully fluffy ones. I agree. I mean, don't, don't be just fluffy. There are some adorable non-fluffy animals, but yeah. They learned early on that if you want kids to pay attention to your story, you have to use animals. Because if that old guy had tried to tell kids, he's like, hey, let me tell you a story about old man Frank and his cousin Herbert. And the kids are like, bored. And they'd already tune you out. They were like, let me tell you a story about Frank the squirrel and Herbert the rhinoceros. And the kids are like, all right, I'm intrigued. And you pull them in. So you had, it's why Disney makes all their money is because they did the same thing. Disney was like, kids love animals. They're fluffy and delicious. And so you have to have animals as your main characters. Three, unlike my stories, if you want a kid to pay attention all the way until the end, how long should a fable be? <laughs> yeah. Really short. Very yep. short. About five seconds. It has to be short. Kids have no attention span. Oh, Mr. Bolivac, I've already tuned you out four times. Well, four times is actually pretty good. Uh, and so fables are actually gonna be really short. Like your guys' idea of short. Uh, fables should be like one paragraph to eight paragraphs for like a really long fable. Most fables are only between like one and four paragraphs in length. Beyond that, kids just tune you out. Uh, yes, especially ADHD children who go around trying to drink trees. I feel the same way. And so that's why, unlike me, who tends to just babble, uh, fables should be really short, uh, which is why I have trouble with fables. Four, uh, and I agree, snakes are cute, especially when you staple fuzz onto them or you let them go underneath the stove in your kitchen and they come out of it and they're all covered in like the, the dust bunnies and they're like a fuzzy snake. That makes them even adorable. They're like legless weasels. Anyway, back to here. Number four is going to be the tone or uh, mood of a fable. Every fable should be humorous or funny. It should be the tone or mood is humorous and funny. Snakes with hats. Snakes with hats are adorable. That seems like it should be like a TikTok. Anyway, the reason being, if you want kids to learn your lesson, which is the whole point of fables, you do not want to depress the children. You want to entertain them. Kids are more likely to learn if they are smiling and enjoying themselves than either if they're bored or depressed or scared. Uh, as an example, you should not start off your fable with, one day there was a raccoon and the raccoon had tail cancer and the tail cancer was slowly eating him away. And you're like, no, is he gonna be okay? And you're like, no, it's tail cancer. You're like, no, not tail cancer. And so it's the same thing. So you're gonna try to avoid depressing things, except for those of you who, as soon as I said tail cancer, you started giggling. You guys have other issues. Uh, so for you, you're more of the tail cancer type, 
But for the rest of us, uh, you're going to try and avoid that. Now, you don't have to make like a knock, knock joke. Like, knock, knock, who's there? Squirrel, squirrel, who? Hit the head of the rock, squirrel. Uh, you don't have to quite go that way. Um, <laughs> because I'm teaching. I'm not doing fables. That's why I don't, well, I mean, I try to do, I try to do the humorous and funny part. I work on that one. I'm not good on the brief and short part because I love the sound of my own voice. Um, and then I, I'm the main character of my class and you guys call me all kinds of different animal names throughout class. That kind of works the same way. And your moral is to learn. Number five, the last one is the age that fables are aimed at. Uh, turns out kids, kids are not the only dumb people. It turns out you're never too old to be an idiot. So fables have to be aimed at people of all ages. Because it turned out as these people started, these old guys started telling the stories in town, it wasn't just kids. Random adults would walk by and be like, wait, wait, are you telling a story? Is this the one about the squirrel and the raccoon? Ooh, and they would start listening to it also. So you're never too old to be an idiot. If you weren't sure about that, go on to YouTube and just type in old people being stupid. And you're like, oh my God, there's so many videos. And there's a lot of videos of old people being stupid. Uh, or you can go into YouTube and type in the phrase, hey, Billy, watch me do this. And then just find out what comes up. You're probably be full of all kinds of old people doing all kinds of dumb stuff on that one too. So the fables have to be enjoyed by people of all ages because you're never too old to be a dum-dum. Oh. So now it is time for our oral quiz where I get to randomly pick on you guys to see who's written stuff down and who's been paying attention. Uh, Karens have left the chat. Must have done. Uh, but before we get to Mackie, what's up, Mackington? Okay, so this is going to sound really dumb, but we're allowed to use the notes we wrote down, right? That's my whole point in doing it. Uh, if you're a smarty smart that writes it down, then absolutely. All right, let me do my video checkerino before I do my quiz and see which kids we have here paying attention. And which kids are paying attention, which kids are combing their hair at the last moment, making sure they look pretty. I feel the same way. You gotta adjust your hair as soon as you come onto the video screen. Are you pointing at the light behind you? Uh, are you in a bathroom? What is wrong with you? All right, so just one kid. What is wrong? I see it. it's a light bulb. Uh, one kid I'm kicking out. All right, so hang on one kid as I remove you. Don't take it personally. I'm kicking you out because I can't see you. Now you're gone. All right, I think the rest of the kids are alive. All right, you're good to go, except for a kid who's randomly pointing at a light bulb because she seems really excited. All right. Ah! Mm, the squirrels, uh, what is wrong with you? Uh, Wow, uh, that is some entertaining stuff on that one. All right, back to here. Wait, who's in the waiting room? That is Nate's back. See, Nate missed me already. And then JC, let's have JC come back. All right, what's up, Carson? Done trying to roast me? No, not this time. But I was wondering, is this a chat challenge or are we just going to like unmute? No, not a chat challenge yet. This is a me attacking random kids challenge. So what's going to happen is when I say your name, you have to unmute and answer before I finish the question. If not, then I get to come at you. All right, ready? Let's find out. Let's go with Mackie. Uh, you get to start off. And so Mackie, uh, my first question is, uh, what type of fable has been around the longest? Is traditional. The one oh, good job. The traditional fable works for me. Uh, let's go with Carson. Um, if we were to get into a rap battle, Carson, what type of fable would we use in our rap battle? A verse. Nicely done. Uh, let's go with Lau. Um, if we were to have a fable that dealt with cell phones and Twitter, what type of fable would that be? Use this to date you stuff so modern. Would be correct. I agree with you on that one. Uh, Squidlykins. Uh, let's go with, uh, ooh, the whole point of fables existing was that we had to teach kids not to be dumb. What do we call the thing that teaches kids not to be dumb? A moral. Go you. All right, good job on that one. 
Let's go with Ledford. Uh, we got into the five characteristics of what makes a fable important. What is the most important thing that every fable must have? It must have a moral. Go you again. There's the same answer twice in a row, just seeing if you guys are paying attention. And go you there. Avery, uh, and then if we want kids to pay attention to our fables, uh, what type of characters should we use to make sure they're going to pay attention the whole time? Animals. Go you on that one. Go. Savannah, unlike my teaching, how long should a fable be so kids pay attention all the way to the end? Short. Unlike my teaching, well done. And then let's go with, uh, we'll pick on Schnippington, uh, sorry, Schnipples. Uh, let's go with what type of tone or mood should uh, fables have so we don't freak children out? <laughs> um, um, I know this one. Okay, wait. I know, that's why I called Happy on you. Happy and lighthearted. I will accept that. I was also going to go for humorous and funny, but lighthearted. Uh, you seem so happy. I'd hate to take it away from you. Well done. Uh, and let's go with JC. Uh, what age are fables aimed at to make sure that they are going to be effective? If it helps, uh, the other part of this question is, uh, at what age do people stop being dumb? I know. I think this is when you had dropped out, so you might not have heard this part. Uh, well, come, don't you worry, JC. I'm going to come back and pick on you again in just a moment. Talbot, we're going to pick on you, and we're going to come back. No, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. JC, I'm not giving up on you. For some reason, I have faith that the answer never, is going to come never, to you. Never, never. So what ages should Babels be aimed at? Uh. Everybody then? Are you are you asking me? I need confidence, JC. Confidence. Everybody, kids. There. That's, those are two different answers, JC. You can't say everybody and then say kids. That, yeah. So you're you're almost try one more time, JC. This time with confidence and just one answer. Kids. You're close. You use the screen in front of you. Can you see the screen, JC? Look at number five, JC. Cough, cough. Everyone. But there you go, JC. I had faith in you. It was the other answer. Good job, JC. You can flex on people now. All right, then back to here. And then to no, not that one. All right. Now we get to continue with our fun. So, ooh, um, ooh, I'll make this a chat challenge ish. Not for nothing for points yet. I'm not like a throwing down chat challenge. This is just for bragging rights chat challenge. So what we're going to get into now with fables is it turns out there was one guy who is famous for fables, who is known as the father of fables. My question is, who was the father of fables, who is the most famous fable teller to ever exist? And then I see you, Elena. I'm going to get to you in just a second. And yes, you guys are correct. Go you. The correct answer is Aesop, uh, Mr. Bropiak's dad. I wish I'd be making fat bank on all that Aesop cash money, but no, that dude. Elena, what's up, dear? Um, it is 104. Just letting you know that you are correct. Um, I only have class like is almost over. I know. I'm sad also. I only have like two more things to get through that I have to let you guys go. I'm glad we're on the same page of my sadness. Um, so we're going to get into this guy. By the, by the way, uh, there's also a rapper named Aesop, for those of you know, a guy named Aesop Rocky, uh, who's actually a really good rapper if you guys ever listened to him. And he named himself Aesop Rocky because in his raps, he tells stories, which is the whole idea of him calling himself Aesop. So Aesop, by the way, Almost any book you get of fables is going to have his name on it. So I have one that's called like Aesop's Fables, and then one that's called uh, Illustrated Aesop's Fables. And so I have Aesop's Fables. And so that's the guy who is known for all of these. Um, uh, what is the Rocky part? That part I don't know. I just know, I think it might be like his real name. Maybe it's because he likes to fight. And it's not like Rocky the boxer. I, that's all, I know the Aesop part. Um, a soap. It could be. I've never heard it that way, but if you want to call him a soap, I mean, he's not around to complain. He died just a couple of years ago. Um, I remember his death made really big news when I was a kid. 
Uh, so he lived approximately 620 to 560 BC. Uh, I think technically that's BCE before Common Era uh, or BC uh, before Christ. Uh, although I don't think that's like the technical term for it. But so he was a law. Now realize fables existed before this guy. It's just that he was the one that became famous for them. And I'll be explaining to you how he became famous in just a moment. Oh, by the way, along those same lines, um, Aesop uh, is a guy who told fables. The name for someone who tells fables is a fabulous. You are called a fabulous if you tell fables. Uh, and so I thought that was one of the greatest names ever. Like me, the reason why I tell fables is that you guys have to look at me and go, Mr. Broviak, you're fabulous. And I go, ah. And so the fact is, it's right there by definition. It makes me happy. So anyway. So Aesop, or Aesop, if you want to go with that one, uh, grew up in this place called Africa. We don't know where exactly in Africa. We just know that he was a boy growing up in Africa. And when he was a young boy, there was nothing special about him. Uh, he was just a normal kid who grew up. He just happened to be the one that listened to all the stories. Every time the old people in town told stories, he would pay attention to those stories. And so because of that, he learned all of them. He loved the storytelling that happened. Till one day in his small town, uh, well, one, he was black, not African-American because he never came to America. Uh, he was just African-African. Uh, and a bunch of white guys showed up in his village and started killing everybody. Uh, these white guys, not from America, they were from a place called Greece. And these Greeks showed up in their conquest of the world, and they conquested his small village. In the process, since he was only a teenager at the time, when they took over his village, they gave him a choice. They go, now that we've conquered your village, here are the two options we are going to give everybody who is left here. Option one, we can kill you. And they're like, what's the second option? They go, option two, you come back to Greece and you get to live as a slave back in Greece. And they're like, well, it sure beats being dead. So they decide to go back and become slaves back in Greece. And so Aesop ends up going to Greece to become a slave. Now, Greeks were different with their slavery than America was. America's slavery was based in hatred and racism and skin color. Greeks were not based that way. Greeks did not care your skin color or what race you were or anything. It was just, if they beat you in battle, they either killed you or you could come back and be a slave. And so they had white slaves, they had black slaves, they had Asian slaves, they did not care. There's just like, you either die or you become a slave. The other thing with Greeks was their slavery was not based in any kind of, again, hatred or racism. Their slaves could earn their freedom. Every slave could earn their freedom in Greece. The other thing you had to do was prove that you would be a um, contributing member of society and you earned your freedom. And so most slaves in Greece eventually earned their freedom and became productive members of society. That was Aesop's goal. But that's the thing we're going to get to on Thursday. So we're not going to get to him earning his freedom and what goes into that till then. And we're going to get to that story. We're going to talk about uh, hillbillies and their lack of teeth on Thursday. We're going to get to our first big examples of fables on Thursday. And then next Monday, we'll get to our quiz. We're not going to have a quiz this week. You're just going to have to deal with the fact that I have no grades coming in this week. I know it makes you sad and it makes you want to rage and flip over tables, but you'll just have to learn to deal with it. Will we have a grade? No, no, I lied to you. There is a grade this week because I just remembered I'm giving you all a one out of one for smiling today. So you get to start my class with an A plus. And so, I mean, except for those of you who aren't smiling, you're failing my class. That's right. I'm already going to be dropping a zero out of one on you, you haters. All right. Anyway, from there. And then, uh, Zeke, I did get your email and I will respond to it. Although, and yes, it was strange. Uh, and I'll do my best. Although, I answered one of those questions like way back in December, the first time you asked it. I think I replied to it then, but I'll reply to it again. That's fine. Wow, Carson, quit trying to pick fights with other kids. He already smiled and he already earned his point. Go you. Schnipple, what are you doing, child? You're playing with fire. Oh my.
Is that what you got for Christmas was a lighter? I do not know what to say, what's going on. I'm gonna stop. Oh, for your candle. Uh-huh. 